I am Captain Randy Kramer, United States Marine Corps Special Section, Covert Military Space Program arm of the Marine Corps. And can you describe the difference between Solar Warden and Radiant Guardian? Sure. So um, in the same way here in America that we have the Navy divides into a couple of different fleets, like we have an Atlantic fleet and a Pacific fleet because it would be too many ships uh, with too great a distances to manage if you put all of those vehicles and all of that personnel under one fleet command. So dividing up the space fleet into Solar Warden and Radiant Guardian is, is the equivalent of having an Atlantic fleet and a Pacific fleet. So there's this arbitrary line drawn through the middle of the solar system. Radiant Guardian gets one side, Solar Warden gets the other side. So that if they have to respond to something, they don't have to go all the way across the solar system, just part of the way across the solar system on their particular half. In our, our last interview, you mentioned that some of these craft were um, tra trading beer and uh, child children's clothing. Where, where did they actually pick that up here on planet Earth? The job so, opportunities. Right. So there are import-export companies who are given the responsibility of fulfilling the contracts that we have with these other species. So let's just say that one of these import-export companies gets a contract that says they have to uh, get you know, half a million units of beer and a million units of children's clothing over the next six months. So that company is going to make the purchases for those units of beer and for those units of children's clothing from around the world. They'll spread it out. They won't just like, you know, call up one manufacturer and have them, you know, fill the order from one company. They'll spread the order out to multiple companies, multiple corporations around the world, multiple other uh, suppliers, import exporters, and then depending uh, on how they, exactly which location they're flying out of, they will then send all of that uh, product in a shipping container or a series of shipping containers that they'll ship to either uh, their landing pad at Diego Garcia. There's another one that's um, in the Canary Islands. And then there's another one that's um, way out in the middle of the Pacific, out in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure what the name of the island that is, but th there are fairly remote locations that don't have lots of people standing around taking pictures with their phones or their cameras. And they're fairly remote. But I, I don't know where all the those locations are, but that's basically how it's done. I'm not sure if it was William Tompkins who said this, but some of these crafts are actually manufactured at, on, in a facility under the Wasatch Mountains in Utah. Like, yeah, I, I heard that facility. Yeah, I mean that we definitely have manufacturing facilities that we make ships here on terrestrial soil, as and certainly in the United States of America here, and uh, most of the facilities that we have here that are there are remote construction facilities are you know anywhere from sort of uh, yeah Nevada to New Mexico to Arizona to Utah that whole sort of southwest desert region a lot of wide open space there <laughs>